Welcome back everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed the first initial navigations and some of the things that we've done already on MATLAB. You should now start to see that it's, you know, it's it's a sneak a little devil. You first you start using MATLAB and it's, you never really appreciate how much functionality it's got to be. For everybody who's Uclan homegrown, you will be well aware of this and you'll have to swallow this quite a bit over the years. If you haven't, or um, if some of this is just scratching some of the brain cells, it's perfectly fine. Have a crack at it. These aren't things that I will be covering in depth in the main simulation module anyway. These are just a little bit of extra messing around really, getting used to it, navigating around it and so forth. So I was thinking about what we we're gonna do. I wanted to stay with the scripting. I don't want to do an awful lot. I don't want to keep going back and back and back to scripting. Um, not for the pure simulation side, I want to move on to a little bit more um, hardcore stuff like simulating and multibody but I don't want to miss scripting because it is such a useful tool it allows you to do so much and it's great for this type of thing so without further ado we are going to move into simulating a first order system in MATLAB but pure scripting so let's have a look at the engineering problem when I actually get this thing oh there we go so what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that a company has come to us and said they want a door that will shut in 3.5 seconds interesting fact with doors a student told me that fire doors are actually designed to shut between I think it's five to six so seven seconds it's, it's something like that but I didn't know and supposedly the theory goes is that because it's a fire door you can shut the door you can essentially trap the air and actually contain the point that's um, that's burning aiding the fire services uh, so much respect for the guys and I think if we can actually do anything like that to help them in their in their role I think that is amazing so yeah it was a little bit of an interesting one for me <laughs> um, we are gonna be looking at uh, a first order system don't forget about the first order system this is a descri description of behavior how the system behaves under certain conditions and um, this is what it does under certain conditions so this is why I've chosen a door door is quite easy to visualize so let's think about it right we're gonna have a company that comes to us and says right we want the door to shut in three seconds three and a half seconds sorry the important factors about it is, if you think about a door, these are automatic doors, so the ones with the big arm on the back. In them, you will find two major components. The first being a spring. Typically, in these sort of equations, we, rec we represent these as K for a spring stiffness. Then, we also have a damper. Now, don't forget, just cast your mind back, but... Don't forget that the spring will hold the energy and dissipate and, and actually fire the energy. It contains that energy. The damper will dissipate that energy. So once the spring initializes the energy, we can control its distribution with a damper. Interestingly, if you have a spring, if you have a resistor and a capacitor, you'll get a similar sort of behavior. Um, it just depends what your loading is, but you do get these types of behavior. So this is a first order system. Two major components that are acting upon it. Right, so, if you imagine a door shutting, how it would actually look, just as, if you look at this, this is typical to how you'd imagine a door shutting. It, you let go, it displaces, 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 then it finds its resting place and then stops. So in other words, opens and shuts. The energy is dissipated across it and it will travel up, travel up, travel up and then the damper comes into play and then dissipates it slowly to allow it to come to rest. Now there's an interesting thing with this. Don't be overwhelmed by a plot. Always look at what you're looking at. So I've put something into this which um, let's say we gave this to the company and they use these spring stiffness values that I've recommended. This is over time. So let's look at that. From zero to, let's say, 0 0.45 seconds, the door moves five meters. Oh my God. It actually travels at the heights of 2.5 meters per second and actually will shut in 0.45 seconds. 
Basically, this is what it does when it shuts. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to laugh at my own jokes. Um, what we really need to do is we need to tune our C and our K values to make sure it does what we want it to. So let's get back to the actual sim. What do we need? Oh, by the way, if you can hear noise behind me, my 3D printer is running at the same time. I'm trying to multitask. Check me out. So, what do we need? We need to know a spring stiffness. This will give us the, dis the strength of the actual spring, typically known as K. We need a damping coefficient. This is going to give us the ratio. This is going to give us the damping that occurs on the actual system, typically known as C in this country. What you will find when we're going to Simulink is, well, typically onto multibody, if we drag in um, a spring damper model, or a model block, I should call it, you'll find on the ratio it's actually known as B. It's just purely because the variable in other countries is not C. In other countries, it is actually B. Um, <laughs> yeah. When I first saw it, I was like, what? How can they get it wrong? But no, no, that's purely what it is. So don't be off put by it. Right, so we need to know a time step. Think of the door shutting. When we first let go of it, we have no idea where the hell it is. I mean, if we look at it, but if you shut your eyes, you have no idea where it is. What we essentially do is we try to look at the rate of change over time. And we essentially try to... Um, numerically integrate the actual value of y and the c and the k in essence to give us a velocity we cannot do this because if we do that that will just give us one point if we did that for the start and the end value all we end up is with a straight line because we just end up with two points so we incrementally do this by a specific time step so let's say we're doing it over 10 seconds and we were going to do it, and we were going to use a time step of one. We go one second. Uh, we do numerical integration. We do prediction of y position. Then we take a point. Then we go one. We do it again. One. We do it again. So we take a time step to increment. Now, an interesting thing with this is if you're interested in the time step and statistics on that time step, I think it's on K. Stroud page, I think it's 500. And they look at using predictor correctors. The predictor corrector idea is that statistically you can analyze how much uh, something's about to occur or the possibilities of things for occurring and you can statistically bring that down a bit. Uh, for more detail I would definitely definitely check that up. It's a great read but what we will do is as we're going through MATLAB you'll notice that we have variable time steps. This is because using predictor correctors can allow you to reset the time step in between each increment as it's running. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so what it actually <coughs> what it actually means is that um, if your if the if the predictions becoming quite linearized what the system will do is make the time step bigger so there's less increments needed because like for this for example we could easily end up with 500 600 lines of incrementation <coughs> <coughs> until we get a settling so these are the things the little sneaky things that you can do right initial inputs of you what we need to know is when the door opens, how big, what type of distance are we talking? I mean, for, for shits and giggles, what we're actually going to do is set it at five. We're going to go jumbo. We're going to go massive door, and we're going to try and get it to show <coughs> in three and a half seconds. Then, game. Now, um, anybody who's on, on MNG, you'll really get to know this next year. Game, static sensitivity. It's typically input over output, and it is an efficiency term, which allows us to look at degradation, look at all different types of losses over time. Incredible, incredible bits of thing. Um, if you're ever solving Laplace, any sort of type of transfer functions, gain or the S value will always occur. And um, with Graham, 
if you go into the master's year with graham on advanced system he really dives deeper into that um it's one of them functions that people look and go oh yeah well it's just just a letter it's not it offers so much more than you think finally initial conditions of zero you're gonna laugh at this but let's say at zero seconds nothing's happened at zero seconds <coughs> when it comes to velocity when it comes to position we want to know how much it's moved at zero seconds how much has it moved zero so it gives us that initial reference point so we're saying from zero it's moving to this point and we're relying on the spring damper ratio the spring behavior almost a constant if you will which ties it in nicely to the time constant now time constant we'll come to that in a second so we need we need to know how to calculate our time constant we need to know how to calculate our velocity and we need to know how to calculate the next position of y how far it's moved so tau tau is the time constant this is predominantly what controls the interface between the spring to the damper ratio um, it is an efficiency term uh, uh, purely between the two major components that affect it now velocity is obviously rate of change over time so dy by dt in this case is calculated by our efficiency term gain so s multiplied by our initial inputs which let's say five meters for example minus y which is the present state of y at that iteration all divided by tau which is our time constant term and then for the next prediction of this this is using euler's method by the way so yn plus one if you've never met this before i mean i know some of you will have met this heavily before basically yn refers to the present position where you're looking at the yn plus one basically says what is my next position in time what is my next position in space so it's equal to the present position of y plus the time step all multiplied by the velocity our dy by dt our rate of change over time at that present state nice easy way of doing it now if you want to look for deriving these equations right from scratch please check on blackboard please look at my uh, simulating first order sy systems with excel i predominantly did this with excel i should point out some of these notes um the i've i've revived these notes and they are the original notes that john calderbank wrote and they're very really smooth really well delivered and i just couldn't see them see them not being done if you will so um i've revived them so if you are interested take a read of them one thing that we're not going to do is i'm not going to do the exact position um if you read through the notes you'll know what i'm referring to this is going to be an extra challenge for anybody who is keen to do that not easy not straightforward but it is a lot of fun promise you anyway right so what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to shift over to MATLAB and let's have some giggles. So I've switched to MATLAB. Um, I've then gone to new script and this is what it's opened. So a few things we need to think about on creating this system and creating this response. We know that we want the door to shut in three and a half seconds. So let's scope slightly above that. Let's say four seconds. Then there's some wiggle room as far as playing around with different variables to see how this thing's going to function. I personally like to have a little bit of space from the top. I know it's weird. A lot of people say that. They go, mm, yeah, it's a bit odd. To be honest, don't give a shit. So, right. First things first. We know that we need a C. So I'm going to type C for my damping is equal to. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to choose very, very, very hard numbers. I'm going to make it dead simple. So I'm just going to go one. And in any good piece of code, people will always say to you, have you added comments? Comments are so valuable because sometimes you'll come back and go, see, the hell was C. So if I type damping, cough, and we're going to the next. 
Now we know with this system we have a spring and a damper, so I'm going to go K is equal to, I don't know, let's go 2. It's quite That's quite an aggressive ratio between the two, but it doesn't matter. We just want to play around with our first order system, make sure it's responding, and then get that first order of behavior and then move on from that. So we'll say spring stiffness. Now, I don't know if I mentioned in the um, opening to this, we will be using uh, Euler, 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 whatever which way you say it. This methodology, we'll be using his techniques to solve the first order system, um, just so you're aware. Now, if you remember, we need an S, which in this case is our gain of the system. Now, because we're going to assume that the system behaves perfectly, that there's no real losses in between it at all, we're going to assume that to be 1. Gain value never really tends to go, well, the S, the static sensitivity, never really tends to go above 1. It operates between 0 and 1, so it it's a little bit of one of them magic numbers, so to speak. So we'll just call this static sense this now allows me to move on to the next we need you 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 was our initial input i just think then <laughs> now we're going to say we're going to open our door by five meters big door monstrous door kind of like open god knows what it's a huge door I'm trying to think of something man went blank so we'll go in it Input. Ah, I'll put I'll put my units on there because con obviously sometimes you can look back and go, what the hell was that in? I mean, I al I always do. You guys might not, but I always do. Right. So what we need to know is we need to have a prediction of why our present state, our present position at zero seconds. So we're going to say y is equal to. Obviously, when I first open the door, and I'm holding this door, and then I let go of the door, at the very moment of that initiation of zero, obviously it's moved zero. Oh, that says I've got, oh no it doesn't. Right, so we go uh, first pause of y. Just to give us that initial starting point right so there are our hard variables what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce tau now if you remember from the presentation or presentation sounds very formal if, um it was tau is equal to c damping over k now you'll notice i'm actually following by the equations itself makes it easier for reading if you're reading back to figure out what things were this is known as the time constant. Right, so we're at the first initial point of ready to roll. I think the best way to move forward is let's try and get a dy by dt. Now, so if I go dy by dt, this instantly is an error. You see where it's brought up the uh, error marker there? This is purely because the system thinks that I'm doing an equation between it. So as frustrated as it might um, annoy some people, and I'm sure somebody will be able to point out to me a way of doing this, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to drop that division and just have dy dt. It will still remind you if it doesn't remind you. Hell. So what we'll do now is we'll say is equal to. Now we know from the um, integration by using Euler's methods and uh, some of uh, Newton's laws if we we know that it's static sensitivity multiplied by our initial input minus by uh, minus y which is our present state of the simulation or the, the 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 prediction if you will all divided by tau now when you're writing these things for those of you who've done excel many times this will be a little bit like pulling teeth just because you'll have done this you'll have done this and you'll have done this and sometimes it can be a bit like Wow, I already know this. But for some who haven't, that's the reason why I want to do this. So we know is it, it is. Let me have a look. 
s multiplied by u minus y all over tau. Now, technically, the way that's written is wrong. It's there's many elements about this. You've got to think of this as like when you when you first started doing GCSE maths and we we're talking about brackets, acknowledgements of equation first. This will not execute correctly, and it will prove to be problematic. So what I'll do is I'll open up an argument. Yeah, by the way, brackets encoding arguments. Who the hell ever called it argument? I have no idea. I don't really know why it's called an argument. If anybody knows, by the way, please let me know. Because I've never been clear why it's called an argument. Um, but it is, it's is—it's called an argument. So I'm going to open up, an, open up a, a, a conversation. Ah! Uh, between s and u you see there I've got open and close brackets this now will multiply s and u together then minus the present state of y then divide tau so it, it gives it strict instructions exactly when you went if you did your GCSE maths well nowadays I think it's even in primary school it's crazy right oh, sorry coffee Right, so let's go on to the next section of this. So that's our dy by dt. So we know the present state and velocity of how much it's going to be moving. So let's just get let's just get a let's just get a marker on there. Uh, velocity, because it's rate of change by time, so it's velocity. Then we need to know our next state of y. That's where it gets a little bit like a uh, so. We're going to go y is equal to. Now, this is the, the annoying bit. If you look, we need it to repeat itself again and again in y because the equation itself is y plus the time step. Um, um, no, sorry, plus the multiplication of the time step and the velocity. But that y needs to iterate, if you will. So when it goes to the next time step, it needs to be that y, not the original y. So if I just put this, for example, if I go y is equal to um, h, oops, uh, plus h. Oh, I'm going to open that argument. I need these two to be equated first, and then we move on to the next. dy dt. We close the actual se segment. Right, so we have the position. And that's our predicted position. So I better put that right at the front. Predicted. So we've now got our predicted position. We've got a point for velocity. But look at that, look at that. Right, so let's say it runs through. Sorry, I thought somebody was going to walk in there. Let's say it runs through. Um, it runs to here. says y is equal to 0. Then it runs into tau. does the normal stuff. It runs to dy by dt. It, it calculates y based on its initial step, which is 0. We have no other idea of where the hell it will be at the 0 point. So it has to have not moved, if you will. So we're initially taking all the other elements into consideration. The most important element about this is tau, the time constant. It's that behavioral ratio between the damper and the spring stiffness. So it's saying that this, we've presently preloaded the spring, so the energy's caught. And so there is um, there is initial velocity being built there from that. That's where our dy by dt will start to really change as, as we open this up. Um, we get into y. So it runs in as 0. Then it says y is equal to that. And all it will ever do is it will take whatever dy by dt and the present time step. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's awkward. I forgot to put the time step in. <laughs> I, I, meant, I meant to do that. Ah, oh, hell. No, I didn't. Right, so. What we'll do is... Oh, no, that's so hard. Once, so let's go. H is equal to 0 0.1. Ooh. 0 0.1. Close that argument and then we'll say to here, time step. Oh. Okay.
Okay, 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 okay. Right, and let's set an overall time as well, to be honest. If we have an overall time, I think it makes life so much easier. So we'll say t is equal to 4. This will be our overall time. Now set it to 4. Like I was saying before, we can have that bit of wiggle room, that tuning area, if you will. Uh, so we'll go overall time. So we've got that tuning area. Nice thing to move on with. Right, so if you've not done already, let's hit save. Keep in mind, MATLAB does not like, in fact, MATLAB doesn't like any spaces, doesn't like, it's, it just doesn't like an awful lot, so I'm just going to call this first uh, underscore order, underscore S Y S T M. So I put no let numbers in there or anything, just, be, I think it should be right with numbers, but better safe than sorry, am I right? Right, so let's run it through. Run. Now it says, oh, hang on a minute. You, you're running something that I have no idea what the path is. Do you want to use that path for something useful? So I go, yeah, okay then. Let's add that path. Might have to ace or stuff like this, honestly. Right, so let's get, let's get back in. Let's get to Y. Look at that, one. Amazing. Now, before we move on to actually fixing this, I just want to examine what's happened. So if I open up Y, you notice here, it's in as one. It's just one. So what it's done is, remember at the beginning when I was talking about how I did that basic equation in the command window, variables were added. What this has done is this is a scripted version of that command window. So you'll notice these variables appearing here. So they've all been defined from this. So you see tau, for example. 0.5 and it's not too difficult to figure out why that is because 1 over 2 um, so we now need to come up with a way of being able to iterate this process we need it to continue through now if you've never done coding before don't worry too much I, I want to go dead slow with this this is called a while loop now, granted, there's going to be a lot of people that suggest, why did you not use a for loop? Why did you not use the TikToks? It's all different types of ways of doing this. But I thought a nice while loop, because it's one of those that people often look and go, oh, not a while loop, and it's not really that scary. Honestly, not that scary. It's been way over, over, over complicated by many, many people. So, what I'm going to say is I want a while. So this is a test. What it says is, while something is less than or if it's equal to or if it's greater than do this test if it's not true so we'll set the test up in a second but if it's not true stop doing what you're doing which you know i mean you say it out loud because it kind of makes sense right it makes sense to me so what we're going to do is going to say while h is less than t so you see where I'm going with this? We've got H being our incremented time step. We've got T as our overall time step. Hell, it's like I designed it. Um, now you see here, you see, look at the while loop. Look at that while there. The while's literally saying, you look at that, you, you know, this didn't always appear. I'm gonna show you this. An end is missing. That did not always be there, I tell you. Nowadays, you just get spoiled. It's just brilliant. So what it's saying, is you've opened up a while loop, but I don't know where your end piece is going to be. Those of you, those of you who are becoming more familiar with Python, will know that that is, doesn't even count anymore. It's all about spaces. Spaces. Can you believe it? Anyway, so I'm going to type end, and you'll notice there what the while loop does. Then it goes, oh, that's much better. Thank you. Right. So this is where it gets a little bit juicier. What I'm going to do is everything that we've designed here going to pop it into the actual while loop pop it in god listen to me um you'll notice that i'm messing around with the tabbing this is called formatting this is like grammar in coding um if you have a test it's always good good practice to tab in if you're becoming more familiar with python you'll know that python 
purely operates on the grammar. So because it operates on the grammar, they found that you don't even need the end markers anymore because if you write correctly, it should just automatically operate around you. It's great stuff, but when you're first getting into it, um, it can be a little bit intimidating because you kind of look and go, what, 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 I have no idea why it's not working. And it's all about the tabbing. Won't lie, oins the living crap out of me. Anyway, it's great though, once you get into it, at first just bug me to crap. Right, so, we've now got this while loop. The while loop is purely saying, while H is less than T, do this. So, we need to give it a reason to be the equal to H. Right, if you, if you follow me. So what we're gonna do is say, H is equal to H plus H. What that essentially says is the present state of H, but it's now equal to H plus its initial step of H. So that's point one. Now we've got an issue here if you look. This will run through but it means that the actual simulation will start at 0 0.1 seconds. Can be a massive pain in the ass. Huge, huge pain in the ass. Few ways of doing it. Um, easiest ways, what we'll do is actually say H is equal to zero. Oh. Say H is equal to zero. And where we've got that H is, H is equal to H plus H, if I drop that and go at 0 0.01, what we've now done is said that H is equal to H plus this time step. So it will increment itself. Great, brilliant, exactly what we need. So back in the actual um, variable window, what I'm gonna do is, this is why I showed you this by the way, it's very useful. Clear commands, boom. Clear workspace, boom. Happy days. Right, so we're pretty confident that we got it. We're pretty confident that it's running and we're pretty confident that we can now start incrementing. Oh, tell you, telling you about bloody comments. Forgot to put one on. So we'll say um, increment. Increment of time step. It's just, just to remind you, because I mean, you'll look there you come back to your code and go, why is it zero? Makes no sense. And then you get to here, you kind of go, oh, oh, oh. I know I have many moments like that. So let's run it. Uh, hell. I'm only kidding. I meant to do that. Of course I was. Right. So we look on why. Why is run through? Why is perfect? But if I double click into Y, look at that, it's five. So it's moved five meters. It means it's solved. It's come to its resting point. That's a huge pain in the ass. Huge, huge pain in the ass. Don't know why it's done it, but it's done it. Okay, so what we actually need to do is we need to figure out why. I know why it's done it, don't worry, so. This actually goes back to when we first set up these variables, right? It's so annoying. In fact, it's not annoying. It gives you so much control over the actual variable setup itself. Once you appreciate how it's been done. Incredibly great bit of kit. So, what it did is it ran into Y. Now, initially it was zero, right? We set it at zero. Then it's gone, gone to the first increment. Then it's gone, let's say it's one. Then it went to the next increment, and let's say it's 1.1. Then to the next increment, 1.3, for example. And it's kept doing that. And it's overwriting the same one again and again and again. And basically, it's um, not what we wanted, obviously. We need an actual column being populated. So we've got to build that column. Now, I personally don't like to overwrite the same thing that's been continuously active at the same time. So I prefer to make an extra one. 
I figure, you know, we've got all this extra stuff. Why not do that? So let's do that. So what I'll do is we're gonna we're gonna create an actual column, if you will, that will increment that for us. So let's get up here. What I'm gonna do is say, let's call it pause. It will remind us what it is. Let's go pause. Pause. Now this is good. Look, all right, look at this. So it says why. This says why default to here. What we're actually going to do is we're going to control the incrementation of each um, variable into the column. It just allows you to have that freedom. So let's say pause, open. Now we're going to say uh, in row i at column one close the arguments is equal to y what it does it goes through and it's going to collect it now the only thing we've not done yet is we've not set i but we're going to increment that we're going to we're going to because the whole test is run on the time step it will just increment itself and keep incrementing until the time step is met so first thing first let's get let's get a comment on there to remind ourselves exactly what this is um, let's call this results maker or results results maker results for pause position right now the other thing we've not done not defined I yet I is incredibly important in this case so we'll say I is equal to now before I set this let me show you oh let me go back to Y look at this rows and columns in MATLAB, you do not start at zero for our rows and columns. I don't think you do in, in Excel. I'm, I'd need to check. But in MATLAB, you do not start at zero. So you start at one. So what we're going to do is say i is equal to one. So what we're saying is on the first initial step, when everything's set to zero, this first column would be, it's probably going to, in fact, if I remember rightly, it was one. Then what we do is go to the next and then to the next. So it should increment itself. Um, let's a little, make sure we got that right. Right, so it runs through, runs through the while loop, runs through the while loop, and runs through the while loop. We need an incremented process. If you look at the H, how we incremented that, we're going to do the same thing. So let's say i is equal to i plus 1. Then we're going to go increment row in um, if I'm making spelling mistakes sue me I'm dyslexic don't care <coughs> I am an engineer not an English scholar <laughs> so let's just call this uh, first row value first row value right so feeling pretty good let's get back clear the commands uh, I'd like to do this just to get rid of any initial uh, recording any memory any memory anything like that let's run it again now what we're looking for now in pause is we're actually looking this this by the way this is a warning and it's saying your variable keeps changing is this something right yeah yes it is so let's jump into pause look at that Boom. Happy days. Wow, that thing settles quick. Um, right, so we've run through the first order system there. Now, when it's run through, if you look onto the workspace area, look at the value now that's come through for pause. It's recorded as 401 by a single double. In other words, it's worked. It's done exactly what we wanted it to do. It's give us that iterative process, really reflecting exactly um, that time step that we needed. So if I click onto the column and then go plots, and don't get me wrong, this is over seconds. That already implies, I mean, we, we've not got a proper axis set up yet. We will do, but if you just look at that axis point there, that is saying X in, let's have a look pull it out 23 
So just as a, if this is over four seconds, this means the door is shut in <laughs> something like 0 0.25 seconds. It's shut a little bit strong. It goes straight back to the cartoon that I showed you before where it, the door shuts so hard, it smacks somebody in the back and shoots them across the room. That's exactly what we've done there. But we don't know for sure until we can record it correctly. So um, I'll go back to home. Again, sometimes MATLAB can be such a pain in the ass. With variables that I've presently collected, what I'm going to do is clear all my workspace. I'm going to clear my command windows, get it nice and clean again. We now need an iterative recording method for our time. We do need to have some some method for time. Now the beauty is, is I've already set the process up for being able to record this type of um, results. So we'll do it again. So what we'll do is call this time. Open up the arguments. We're going to say I, because don't forget, we're recording from that point. We're going to go from the initial column, close the argument. We're going to go into, uh, I'm sorry, equals. Now, this is what we need to be thinking about. We're going to record it from a present state. Now, we only want time as an actual X value that we can measure against with our, a pause, if you will. So, let's say uh, is equal to H close that again this is coding and I don't if you unless you're some sort of genius you will come back and go the hell was that doing make sure you put your comments on without the comments you're a bit lost so let's say um, results of time or record of time record 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 of time step then if we run it again run it again Oh, happy days, time and pause. What we'll do this time is we won't use the plots tool because we want to be more specific. So let's just do a direct command window command. Let's go plot. We own up the argument. Again, why are they called arguments? No, I have no idea. So in here, right, it says plot. Give me an X value. We know that our X value for this is time. Then we go comma. Next thing it needs to know is Y incrementation. We know exactly is pause. So let's close the argument. Don't forget to close the line or else we'll end up with trillions of outputs coming from the command window, which we don't need. And there you go. In single plot at the moment, I know it's still a little bit clumsy, but it's exactly what we're looking for. We've got the four seconds and not that I'm trying to show off, but I did predict around 2.5 and it is a, 2.25 something like that uh, I'm just dragging it around a little bit you can see there it settles it rests in five so the displacement in meters means that my massive door that I've just opened is now shut and it's shut very quickly very very quickly so it doesn't meet the criteria of our design of three and a half seconds we don't want to shut it too quick don't forget so let's close that the other thing that we do need to know is we've done dy by dt, the rate of change due to time. Um, we could do, we're doing a, a record of what that is. So don't forget, it's the velocity. So I'll just say vel is equal to. Again, uh, just borrowing exactly what I did in the other one. So we say vel, sorry, we go open argument, i, bracket one, close that bracket. We got equals to, equal to dy dt close it and again get a comment on there so we go results for velocity so let's run it again so we've run it again now that time I didn't clear the window it can bring in lots of problems so I'm just gonna clear it all again and to be honest it's getting a bit annoying now let's just code it to clear it let's say clear Vel. Oh. Vel. Clear. Um, pause. And what we'll do? Oh, well, we'll, we can actually leave time. Time doesn't actually change. So if I run that now, I run it, and what it'll do is just pull out the all important ones for vel and pause. So let me just go up. 
I need that. You see there, I've gone time, but this time we're going to go Vel. Because if we go Vel for our velocity, what it'll do is show us that the speed that it's moved. So it's, <laughs> wow. 10 meters per second over 0.25 seconds. It's shut incredibly quick. <laughs> I think it's probably, sh it shut so quick, it's probably pulled itself off the hinges and through the wall. But, so it's a little bit outside of our criteria that we were designing for. Right. The other thing that I like as well, I don't know what you're like, if you're doing your final thesis, if you're doing your final project, sometimes to have a multiple plot in one, oh, it does look good. Very, very good, very sexy. So, you'll notice here when I ran the plot, the plot is just a direct command. Now MATLAB in itself does have some extra things that are dead great. So what we'll say is I'm gonna do a subplot. So we'll go subplot. In the subplot, it literally says uh, how many rows, how many columns, and what positional plot are you interested in? So I'm going to go two rows by one column, and I'm going to start at one. Getting your head around it is important. So um, outside of here, I'd always recommend having a crack at it, playing around with it, getting used to it. So I'll say plot, open, and we go time. Oops. Time and then comma and we go pause. So what this means is my, in my subplot now, I'll have a plot above, which will be my time and pause. And I'm gonna have a plot beneath, which will be my time and velocity. Then we can tune to actually suit. We can tune to meet that 3.5 seconds. Uh, right, the other thing is, is some people are dead keen for titles. Uh, it just depends. If you've got a lot of data inside of a single plot, it's very good to have a title there, really define what it is, or or you uh, put it into the axis, and on the figure of wherever you're displaying this data, you can always put it into there as well. So there's a few ways of doing it, but um, what I'll do is I'll show you how to, how to add a title. So we're gonna say title. And we'll go position. And in our position, I'm going to close that. And then, now this now becomes a tile. So when I run this in my subplot, it appears as position. Next, we're going to go X label. We're going to open this up, put a comment in into there. So let's call this time. Don't forget the units. If you don't put your units in, you just get yourself shot. It's murder. Make sure you get them units and they're just as important. Another thing to keep in mind here is, is I've made you always keep in mind that you've got to end the lines. Notice here I'm not actually ending the lines. I'm keeping it open. So this technically MATLAB will see it as a single command and go right, title, X label, Y label, then execute it. So it's it's a way of actually controlling what it is that you're working on. So then we come back into here and we go coming. Let's go, what were we on? We're on displacement, yes? So displacement. We know that this is in meters. And then we will close that. <coughs> oh. Right. So we've got his display. <laughs> I've just noticed. Have I spelled that right? That looks wrong to me. No, that's right. So that's our first subplot. Now, if you wish, make life easy, you can literally highlight the whole first element of that subplot, go beneath, and then paste. So again, all I'll do is trace along what I was doing. Um, it is still the same subplot, so I'm doing two rows, one column, but I'm now interested in position two. And where I have my time and pause, this is no longer pause, this is vel for velocity. Then on to position, for the title, I'm probably not gonna put a title on here. You can choose whether you want to or not. The important thing is now is you've seen how to add them. So what I'm actually gonna do is on my X label, I'm gonna call that velocity. Because that's what we're plotting, don't forget. And don't forget, velocity is recording meters per second. Right, if 
you've not done already, make sure you hit save because when these things when these things fail, it is heartbreaking. So let's run it. Ooh, never good when that happens. Um, oh, look at that! Right, get up to here. Look, notice we have pause lowercase p, and in my plot, I've said uppercase p. Needless to say, MATLAB is inc <laughs> it's incredibly frustrating when it comes to a uh, context of uppercase and lowercase. Right, now, look at that. What we've got now is a subplot. We have the same. Uh, we have displacement. We have velocity being recorded. We know that it's moved 10 meters per second over... What's that? It's moving at 10 meters, but it's actually moved in very quick as that. Um... So this in itself would suggest to me that the spring, as the spring's loaded, it delivers, delivers, and the damper is just essentially trying to catch up. It doesn't fail in its role at all, but it could do with being relieved a little bit. So what I'm even going to do is I'm going to drop that spring stiffness even by a factor of 10. So let's just run that again. You look at it now, now we're looking that the door is now taken a second to close. Its velocities drop down drastically, so it's now at a sensible speed where we're not going to potentially murder someone. But we're looking at a speed now that's something a bit more realistic. You know, we've got the rise time between let's have a look between one to an estimate of around 0.5 seconds. So it still has quite a motion between it. But if we now bring that down even more, let's go. Let's drop down to something crazy, like a factor of um, a hundred between the two. That's crazy. So we have a damping coefficient of one, which is monstrous. Just want to add, but we have a spring stiffness that is practically at nothing. And look at where we finish. We finish at around three point five seconds. But if we wanted, we could change. We could play around with this. If I drop that to 0 0.5, really dropping it down quite a bit, what I'm able to do now is, based on the forces that are coming out of the door, because this then becomes the next process, if you will, I can really tune this spring stiffness to behave as I want it to. And in essence, I can control how quickly or how slowly this thing will respond, depending on application that you're doing, hence why I chose a door. Door is a nice example because it's simply open and then we'll if you can imagine the door shutting, it helps for visualization. Right, so that is the first order system. It's a nice subplot. Um, if you are interested in deriving some of these equations further, please see the notes that are on Blackboard. These, they are, let me think, they are simulating first order systems with Excel. Again, I didn't write these notes, but they are phenomenally good notes, so um, I like to work from them. Um, Euler's techniques are heavily promoted on this and it's a cracking way of doing it. The other thing I am not doing in these in this tutorial is in them notes you'll find a methodology called the exact formulation. I'm not going to do it because um, it's one of them little challenges that I'm going to leave open to anybody who's up for it. It's a great little thing. Once you get it going, what it allows you to do is plot the difference between what the exact solution suggests and what your simulator solution suggests. And you can look at the truncated responses and uh, other things like that. The last thing I wanted to really point out here is let's just open up time. Uh, sorry, far alarm. Um, let's just open up time. Look at the time incrementations there. This will drop down to 401 increments. We can make that smaller. We can tighten up this resolution. But the real question is, is what's the smallest? After a while, you'll start to get into instability in the reactions. But you are looking for a sweet spot, if you will. Um, when we start to move a little bit more deeper into MATLAB, I'll show you the uses of predictor correctors the statistical analysis methods to look at the time step and judge whether the time step needs to be refined or extended. These are commonly known as variable time steps. Incredible bit of kit. What I also wanted to do as well is not just 
focus to the MATLAB. I'm also going to do some extra webinars on using SolidWorks because I do personally feel SolidWorks gets a bad rap when it is still a very capable simulation tool in many aspects. And I want to try and open some of that up to try and give everybody a, an insight to different softwares. So I hope you've found this useful and I hope you've um, in, enjoyed this process. And if there is any questions about this, please drop by the office uh, and I'll try and fill it in for you and see you soon.